Welcome to this Paladarian build and the first video on my channel. If you're new here, I also have a TikTok and Instagram, Plants and Water. I'll have links down below. But without further ado, let's get right into it. The tank I used is a DOOA Paladis 60 on an ADA 60 piece stand. Now I forget the brand and model, but I also got this LED light at my local fish store. It's about a medium brightness. Now I also got some hornwood, which I'm soaking here, and some Hakai stone, which I washed. And I placed the hornwood in the middle of my tank, off to the side a little bit. And this is what I'm going to use as reference for building out the rest of the hardscape. Next up, I started placing the Hakai stone to match some of these leading lines that the driftwood gives me. Then I started to lay out some sand. This is La Plata sand from ADA. Here I'm laying the last piece of rock. This is going to actually be for a waterfall. The positioning of this was very delicate and I actually had to take it out and put it back in a few times. Here's a close-up of how it rests on top of the other rocks. There's only three points that it touches. Now here I'm using black lava rock to lay the foundation of these hills, so I'm going to put two hills on the left and right side. Now I'm just getting the final positioning of this last piece of rock, because up next I'm testing how the waterfall is going to look. When I finished placing it, I used some gel super glue. I used the Gorilla Glue brand, and I used those three touch points as glue locations so that it's nice and stable. To make sure that bond was strong, I used this toothpick to spread around the gel super glue so it made sure to touch both rocks completely. Then I filled the other side of the hill with more black lava rock. Once that was done, I started prepping the next layer, which is going to be my actual soil layer, which is where all my nutrients will be. Now I'm using Tropica brand aqua soil here because it tends to leach the least uh, versus like ADA or even the UNS ones. And I'm adding it to these uh, filter media bags. I got this idea from MD Fish Tanks and figured I could adapt it to make a really tall uh, and dynamic hill because these bags will hold the shape really well. It makes it a pain to plant later on, but it really makes this dynamic hardscape possible. Next up, I took some sphagnum moss, took it out of the bag, and gave it a good crunch to break it up a little bit. And then I wet it down with a spray bottle and worked at it until it was fully moistened. The point of this layer, this top layer, is to hold in the moisture because the aqua soil and the lava rock both drain way too fast. And some plants will need this extra moisture, especially the maidenhair ferns later on. At this point I added a little bit more sand to the back of the tank to cover up those filter mesh bags. And what this does is it also adds a slope from the front to the back of the tank. This also helps give a little bit more depth to the hardscape. And this pretty much finished the hill, so you can see the lava rock on the bottom, then the aqua soil, and then the sphagnum moss. Now I'm going to use some more of that super glue from before to attach some airline tubing to my pump. This pump I also got at my local fish store. It's 85 gallons per hour, and this is what's going to irrigate the plants up top. Now this next part was a lot of trial and error. I got these right angle and T connectors off Amazon, and I hooked them up to a configuration where I'd have a waterfall on the right side, and then some extra irrigation on both the left and right sides. Here, I'm trying to figure out a good placement for the pump. I settled on the left side because I thought it looked the best, and then I just started to lay down the irrigation to see what it would look like and how it functioned. Mm -hmm. 
After I was done with that, I picked up some of the loose pieces of sphagnum, cleaned it up a little bit, and finally I added water. Here I am cleaning off the surface of the water, because a little bit of sphagnum got in there, and then I started taking off some of this moss that I was keeping in there temporarily. Then of course it's right back to work making more little tweaks to the irrigation system. This was the prototype of how I would do the drip irrigation. I just drilled a 7 64th inch hole, and this ended up working surprisingly well. Now that I knew roughly how I was going to do the drip irrigation, I started to cut some of the airline tubing to size and drilling some of it into its final configuration. This is what the final system looks like on the left side. It's a little bit wonky, but it works. And this is what the waterfall looks like. And this is the irrigation for the right side. I ended up removing this ball valve because the flow between the left and right sides was honestly perfect as is. Now I'm adding a little bit more sand in the back to complete this land bridge between the left and right side and to hide some of this airline tubing. Here I am smoothing it out and splashing some water on it to get it nice and smooth. And finally, to complete this, I just cut the right side's tubing to length and did a little bit more test fitting. Now we're going to jump forward in time after I ordered some plants. Here you can see I have a jewel orchid, it's a Ludigia discolor, and a Salaginella uncinata. Here I am just cleaning up the tank and getting it ready for planting. And I also ran out to get some other plants. So here's a maiden hair fern, some Palaya baby tears, Tridscantia Zabrina, and Tridscantia Pink Panther. Next, I started taking these plants out of their pots and prepping them for planting in the actual tank. So I had to clear off all of the soil from their roots, and I gave them a good rinse under the sink after this too. You can see my cat Bo has discovered this and is very curious about what's going on. Now for the fun part, we're going to start planting. As I said before, this is a pain in the butt because the filter bags stop you from actually putting the plants in the soil, so you have to lift the bags up and stuff the roots in between the bags. So it made it a huge pain, but I think it's worth it in the end. To make my life easier, I just started everything off by laying the plants on top of the sphagnum moss rather than burying them. Uh, so later on you'll see me switch around the order and the placement of all of these plants. I did this a few times off camera, but I think the end result was really worth it because it helped me visualize how the tank would look. Here I am adding the last piece of mood moss right before I trim some cuttings of the jewel orchid. Now I'm recording this about two weeks after I set this up, these cuttings ended up not working, at least for now. They started to get some root rot, and I took them out and propped them into some sphagnum moss where they're slowly recovering. Next up, I added the floating plants. These are some red root floaters. Now, last but certainly not least, this is one of my favorite plants of all time. This is Hydrocotyl tripartita, and I'm gonna scatter this around the water line. This is a great plant that grows both immersed and submerged. It also sucks up nutrients really fast, and the leaf shape matches the maidenhair ferns perfectly. It's one of my favorite plant combinations. Now that the planting was done, I just cleaned the glass one more time before I added the botanicals. So this is what I chose for botanicals. These are guava leaves, seed pods, banana stems, and alder cones. I ended up not using the alder cones in the end, 
but I prepped them by boiling them first uh, and straining them, and then I just grabbed some tweezers and added them to the tank. After one last swish on the shoreline, the sand was nice and smooth, I topped off the water, and this tank is pretty much done. I just did some cable management on the left side using some zip ties, and we're going to be adding some springtails and isopods to this. These little guys are super beneficial, they break down waste, organic matter, uh, even mold. And to be honest, I just think they're cute, although you don't really see them a lot. The second you add these guys, they go right into the soil. And with that, the build is finally complete. 